All right, we're here tonight to learn how to make an HHO generator. Basic home construction unit, easily assembled with parts you can buy at your local hardware store, or Menards or Lowe's. And uh, I want to start out by saying that uh, I accept absolutely no responsibility for how you use the technology that I'm going to show you, uh, whether it be implied or not, uh, no matter how you use it, I absolutely will not accept responsibility results good or bad. This is a simple design, it does work, I will show it to you at the end of the video in operation on my vehicle. I mean, the components you're going to need uh, to build this, you're going to need a ball, wide mouth jar. If you don't have a ball jar around the house, you probably have an old miracle with glass jar around the house. Those have the same size opening. They're shaped a little different, but they're the same depth and work in the same manner. You're going to need a 3 inch quick cap. You're going to need a couple of stainless steel camp spatulas. Solid handle, the whole thing is all metal. That's what you want. You do not want the ones that are spot welded. You want the solid ones like these. You're going to need a 3 8 by 3 8 nylon fitting. You're going to need two or one and a half, two inch, uh, you could probably use a one inch actually, quarter 20 nylon bolt. You're going to need four nuts. You're going to need two stainless steel quarter 20 bolts. They don't have to have a round head, they can be hex head. One to two inches long. A couple of stainless steel quarter 20 quarter inch washers. A couple of stainless steel quarter 20 nuts. To get started, you take your spatulas, and if they won't fit down in the jar, you're going to have to shave the sides down. Grind them down, cut them down, whatever, so that they'll fit down inside the jar. You're going to measure it out so that the, the depth of the jar, or just above the level, when you put the cap on, that way you're holding that down in there tight when you slide the cap on, and these are sitting there rattling around inside the jar. You take your spatulas, after you figure out how deep, deep that's got to be, you bend your handles over, you drill a hole in each one, you go ahead and clamp them together, drill another hole there, another hole there, and you slide your quarter 20 bolts through there. Slide one through, you put a nut on it, like I have here, as a spacer, and you slide the other one together, put your other nut on there, tighten it up so you have your gap. Makes a nice clean gap for your electrolyte process to happen. Okay, once you have that done, all you got to do is get your cap, you lay your assembly down on top of it like so, mark it with a marker so that you can drill your holes in the cap like so. You're going to have a hole for each electro, electrode, the anode and the cathode, and a hole to put your fitting in. Once you get it all set up, go ahead and slide your bolts through. Like so. Put them through the cap. Like that. So they're sticking up out. Now you got something to hook your wires onto. Your washers, that'll help seal it. Put your nut on there. You're going to use a wrench to tighten these down. I'm not going to do that right now during the video. Put them on there, tighten them down. Take your fitting, I'm going to move that clamp out of the way for now. Take your fitting, after you've made your hole, make sure that it's nice and small so this fits in there tight. Slide it in there, turn it in there nice and tight. Now you got your electrode assembly all put together. Got your anode and your cathode, your jar. Go ahead. Put your clamp on, slide that bugger down into the jar, snap your cap on, it should go on nice and tight and snug. I've got mine set up like I showed you a minute ago, so that mine actually puts force on the spatulas. Try to get them kind of even, doesn't need to be. Alright, there's your cell. Real simple. Now you're going to take and you're going to get some water, not distilled, 
or RO water or Aquafine, any of that. Just good old fashioned tap water. You're going to put in about a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Put it in this jar up to approximately there. So you have a gap for the gas to produce. You go ahead and mix it up a little bit. You're ready to install it in your vehicle. Once you get it in the vehicle, go ahead and hook one of these up to a ground. Hook the other one up to a, a switched circuit so that it's only hot when the key is on. That way you're not putting gas up underneath the hood of your vehicle when your key is turned off. That would be bad. And as you can see, right now I have power to it and I'm bubbling into another jar so you can see it. I just took the power away. I'm going to let the water clear. Okay, I'm going to just connect this to a regular car battery right now. There's your gas production. Now that electrolyte process Currents traveling from one plate through the other, through the water to the other. So you've got hydrogen and oxygen gas right now being produced, coming out of that jar, going out of this fitting through the tube, and it's bubbling. Now this is hydrogen gas. This isn't tool time, and I'm not Tim Taylor. Hydrogen gas goes a long way. A little bit does a lot. That little bit of hydrogen that that thing is putting out will give you a mileage increase. Now this water will go a long way. See how slick that works? And that's just with some basic parts that you can get at your hardware store. You've just made yourself an HHO generator. Hope you have good luck. You can email me with questions. I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. I told you I'd show you the one that's in my truck. Um, as you can see, mine looks quite a little bit different. I've experimented over the time that I've been building these. And uh, mine I have in a stainless steel canister. I have the same design, two spatulas inside of that, suspended. But I also have them insulated so they can't short out against the sidewalls of that stainless steel container, which is, which is bolted to the engine block and grounded. wired into the uh, windshield wiper motor and I also have a fuse. I suggest you secondary fuse here for your uh, generator in case you ever had a short out and you wouldn't melt your wiring down maybe even cause a fire. I also suggest that you use connectors to do a professional installation so you don't have loose wires and frayed wires shorting out against one another. wiper motor for a reason. When I turn the key off, the generator is off. The last thing you want to do is have a hydrogen generator under the hood of your car pumping out hydrogen gas into your vehicle when the key is off. That is bad. Again, if you have questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. I am not uh, advocating an installation into your car. I'm just showing you what I've done. If you decide to do this, it's totally up to you. I accept no responsibility for the results, good or bad. I'm only going to tell you what I've found has worked for me. 
and I hope that you can use the information I gave you in this video. The whole idea was to get it out there, get it free to people, help you out a little bit.